Connecticut's youngest city, West Haven, has a lot of history. It was part of New Haven when the British invaded New Haven Harbor, and two main roads are named after fighters on both sides of the Revolutionary War. On the very same spot 100 years later, the town saw a Saven Rock amusement park become a regional attraction. A lot has happened to West Haven Shores, and joining us today is West Haven Mayor Nancy Rossi to talk about the state of the city and its future. We'd like to thank our premier sponsor, Digital Back Office Palo Alto Networks. Check them out at digitalbackoffice.com or paloaltonetworks.com, as well as our sponsors at Gateway and Housatonic Community Colleges. The Municipal Voices of Connecticut Conference of Municipalities podcast in collaboration with WNHH LP 103.5 FM. I'm your host, Matt Ford. As always, be sure to give us a like and let us know what you're thinking in the comments. CCF's Municipal Voice podcast continues to present a key forum on important state local issues. The views expressed do not necessarily reflect the consensus views of CCM or our member municipal leaders. Mayor Rossi, thanks for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. I'm really um, excited about being here and talking about our wonderful city, West Haven. Well, there's a lot to talk about with West Haven. Um, now, top of everyone's mind now, as with all cities, is uh, you're dealing with COVID-19. Um, how has this pandemic been affecting West Haven? Well, COVID-19 has affected all of us, including West Haven. It's been tough on our residents and even our employees in City Hall. Um, you know, we've had to, um, we've been closed to public since uh, the middle of March. Mm -hmm. So trying to facilitate and have been successful in it. But again, it's a more difficult task to do. And so I appreciate all our employees have been doing for us because they show up every day. They're still mm -hmm. ready to work. They're facilitating and helping our residents. Um, as far as that, of course, we're concerned about, um, you know, COVID and our revenue stream because mm -hmm. when people don't have jobs, they're not going to have the ability to pay taxes. Yeah. So again, it's affected all of us. Um, we're happy now that it seems like Connecticut's doing better than most states. So we're hoping we continue that path and can completely reopen in the next few weeks. I hope so too. Um, so has the closures of City Hall, has that prompted you to make any changes as far as uh, allowing some things to happen remotely or digital? Have you, has anything like that going on so far? Well, we've done some digital. We've had some people working from home, but mm -hmm. what we do in digital was get tax payments, which again, mm -hmm. we wanted to facilitate that. So along with myself, my um, executive assistant and commissioner of public works, we put together an outside ramp. Um, mm -hmm. We have facilitating things through the side of the um, city hall. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to coming, people have been out there, we've tented it in case of weather, whether it be mm -hmm. rain, sun, anything like that. And so far it has worked out um, well. So that's one of the major changes okay. because once we wanted to allow people who wanted to in-person come and pay that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, a drive-thru. Yeah, pretty much a drive-thru, except it's a walk-thru. A walk-thru, okay. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're not they're not driving, they're parking in the parking lot, walking around and standing and then because a lot of people want to get a receipt, you mm -hmm. know, and then by even though we have encouraged anyone who can to mail in tax payments, mm -hmm. whether it be by their credit card, you can do online or you can send mm -hmm. a check. And um, there are people who want to go and I understand that. So that's why we did make this mm -hmm. provision to be able to do that. And I assume if people paid online, they could print out some sort of receipt on their home printer or something. Usually they can, or they can go yeah. back to the uh, web page, like once the payment's been processed and yeah. it'll Print show out. that there's owed. So they can do that. But some people, and I get it, still like that receipt. I like that receipt yeah. sometimes too. Some people do. I'm guilty of that as well. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, in West Haven, one concern is uh, the damper that COVID puts on summer activities because um, you have lovely beach and boardwalk there. Um, it's a large part of the draw for a lot of people to come into West Haven. Um, do you think that uh, this is going to have a big impact on tends you to have a certain amount of reliance on tourism? Well, I do believe it's going to have some impact, but I have to tell you, I think we've done um, good with this. We had mm -hmm. to shut our board for a period of time, as did other uh, municipalities as well in the height of it. But we did reopen our boardwalk under the guidance of our health director and emergency management director. I'm very mm -hmm. um, fortunate to have both Maureen Lillis and Joe Soto um, at the helm with me because we, I think we've done a good job. So we have reopened mm -hmm. it. The difference is though, we're not letting any out of towners in this year. We're okay. just sticking with residents only. We're looking at, you know, week by week, but so far that has worked out. Again, mm -hmm. we're going to miss revenue because we appreciate our out of towners and yeah. once the cleared up. We want to welcome yeah. them back. But right now there have been some parking issues and mm -hmm. different. Things. So working with the police, um, we have gotten that somewhat under mm -hmm. control. 
And uh, so we were able to open up and the people are enjoying our beaches and we had some beautiful weather and, mm -hmm. and they've been doing their best to social distance and all, mm -hmm. of, it, all of the rules. So I guess having only the town residents keeps the, the, just the numbers down and allows more space for people to socially distant at the beach. Correct, because we had only opened up 50% of our parking lot when we originally opened, mm -hmm. then we went to 75%. Mm -hmm. Eventually, we're hoping to go to 100%. We have, though, all of our residents should have received their beach stickers, so now mm -hmm. the only way they can get in is they have to have their beach sticker affixed to the car with a marker mm -hmm. plate on it, uh, the same marker plate in the left-hand window in order to gain entrance, otherwise they could be ticketed. Mm -hmm. And is that that's a temporary thing, you hope? Well, the temporary thing is we we changed our process with beach stickers a few years back. There was a committee mm -hmm. put together. And before that, anybody could change anybody's sticker because there was nothing on it. Now we have the marker mm -hmm. plate on it so we can easily take a look at it. Um, but what we're trying to do is facilitate that process in our parking lots. And again, out-of-town residents, unfortunately, as much as you know, we enjoyed having them and we will mm -hmm. welcome them back one day, it just isn't going to happen at least through July and probably most of August. Um, so because the beach is outside, um, and you know, I was talking about outdoor activities as being one of the safer things we can be doing right now, mm -hmm. um, being outside, social distancing puts less risk as part of phase two. Um, but how do you enforce, uh, any of those sort of things at the beach? Well, we have had, the police have been wonderful. We've stepped up police presence down there. We have uh, many more constables and they've been working um, longer hours, if you will. Mm -hmm. And they're trying their best. I mean, they can't go up and down the beach and go to every person if they're not, if they're like, say, four feet away. Mm -hmm. And some people come in groups and families and types like this. So we've been doing our best um, mm -hmm. with, again, not only social distancing, but parking as well, whether it be illegal parking. And um, there was a lot of people like throwing trash in the beginning. So the police have done a great job uh, mm -hmm. enforcing. Is it 100%? No, it's not 100%. I don't think anybody will ever get 100%, but we're doing the best we can to keep everybody safe. Yeah, I imagine, uh, you know, as with everybody else, there's so many unprecedented things going on that the police kind of have a bit of a learning curve on what you know the safety procedures should be and also how do you enforce something during a pandemic with you know safety in mind but also some sort of compassion and understanding I, I imagine that there's been an evolution for them on that yes and I have to tell you though again they the learning curve may have been there in the beginning but it, it's seamless now they mm -hmm. again they they have um, down there they've been walking down there they drive down there um, they've been back and forth and I know myself I try my best to go up and down the beach every mm -hmm. you know especially on the weekends whether I get out stop look at the parking and the police have done a wonderful job of um, maintaining order um, I know we've had um, you know uh, you know a couple of there was one um, Friday night that a lot of um, seniors from other um, municipalities had yeah. come to Beach and they there, there were no injuries and, and no one got hurt and they have done very very great job with maintaining order down there. Sounds good. Um, so have you coordinated or talked at all with any of your counterparts in other shore towns about their beach openings? Was there any sort of you know feeling out what everyone else was doing? We did feel out what everyone else is doing and CCM I have to tell you has been very good about keeping us informed mm -hmm. and we can always read to them but I've had um, one of my assistants in my office um, call to find out and most of the other shoreline communities have been doing the same type of thing with mm -hmm. residents only. I imagine if one town did it and the next one over didn't then that beach might get overcrowded and so we kind of all have to be on the same page to a certain extent. Exactly and that's what we were concerned with too because again with the social distancing we're only going to allow x amount of people in the parking lots so it's absolutely true. If say our, um, our neighbors were having residents only and we open it up to everyone, we would have had a, hu a huge problem, I believe, with parking and social distancing. Well, moving on to something a little bit different. Um, West Haven is in the unique position of being part of the Municipal Accountability Review Board, or MARB, as we shorten it, uh, which was set in motion before you assumed office. Um, through your leadership and partnering with the MAR board, uh, West Haven finances are undoubtedly getting better, uh, but it hasn't always been a smooth ride. Um, how has it been to collaborate with a board that sits outside of city leadership? I have to say it's, it's gotten better. It's not as difficult as it was in the beginning because mm -hmm. 
finally in office one day. I'd taken the oath of office on the Sunday, and on the Monday, um, I got a call and was summoned to Hartford on Tuesday and was handed the letter that, okay, you're under the review board. So we've done our best. Um, we've also had a lot of members change on it, too, with the mm -hmm. change of, you know, and all of that but we have done our best and I do believe that we have made major improvements um, our outlook for our bond rating um, was raised for uh, um, probably about a year ago now mm -hmm. and um, we're moving along and we our financial uh, position has improved we have a fund balance no longer have a deficit in our general Keep that moving. That's very, very important um, so that we have some sort of rainy day fund as opposed to, um, you know, having a deficit, which means you have absolutely nowhere to go. So we're going to keep going along. I, my goal is hopefully before I leave office, mm -hmm. whenever that is, is that we are able to have the requirements to have MARB um, uh, be able to release us from their mm -hmm. jurisdiction. And that is three balanced budgets and no longer relying on state aid, which is um, a goal of ours. Mm -hmm. And we do have that phased out in 22. So I'm very, very hopeful as much as, you know, um, they've been very helpful in a lot of ways. And yeah. I, obviously the restructuring funds have been very, very helpful. It's very hard sometimes for myself and others in my administration to lead when you always have to be checking with them on certain things, yeah. for contracts. $50,000. So I don't have the free will that other mayors might have had. But, but you may in the future. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm very, very hopeful in the future I will. You have hit three years of a balanced budget and no longer be taking the state aid, then you're free again. Then we're free. <laughs> um, so property taxes have been a large part of the negotiations uh, with the MAR board. And you've argued against putting that strain on the taxpayers. How do you balance the budget while not serving residents through a regressive tax like the property tax? It, that has been very, very difficult. Um, we have done negotiations though. Um, we've been able to, in the beginning, um, we had to do a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. And in there, again, it, there were tax increases because there was nowhere else to go. But right now, our grand list the last two years has grown. Mm -hmm. So that rates revenue as well. So um, we've been able to offset some of the tax um, increases. There still has been though a tax increase and we're uh -huh. hoping that it's, as we have economic development, uh, we have uh, in Allentown, Parkview is pretty uh -huh. much ready to open um, shortly. Okay. Uh, the Hayden is um, again um, up and, and supposed to, they, they're doing asbestos removement uh -huh. and different there so we do have um, other other items that um, mm -hmm. other economic development projects that we are trying very hard to work on so that we can generate revenue in another way without continually taxing the taxpayer yeah and and because I know West Haven and New Haven a lot of other towns um, have a growing portion of property that's non taxable um, you have UNH um, in town Yale's got a presence in town there's the VA um, do you feel like the state could be doing more to provide its towns and cities with proper funding um, in programs like the payment in lieu of taxes of pilot uh, that would offset some of these exempt properties? Um, I believe they, they should do more because once again, it's very difficult, especially for a tier three municipality, which mm -hmm. is what financially to be able to meet our obligations. So basically what we lose in um, the pilot funding, if we don't mm -hmm. get of it we have to pass on to the taxpayers and so I I am hopeful in the future that they'll come up with a different formula and give um, myself and we're not the only municipality like this there's others around us when you have a lot of tax exempt property mm -hmm. you have control over if the state only allows X amount of dollars you you know you have to make it up elsewhere and that is a, a difficult and daunting task um, part of the MARB agreement is having five-year plans um, and a big goal for West Haven is economic development. Um, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, there's a lot of pushback over some of the beachfront developments that were happening at that time um, that could have changed the character of, of the beachfront. Um, but there's a few places that have sat dormant for a little while now, like Chicks um, on B Street, supermarket around the corner. Do you see these areas as ripe for development? I do see them as ripe for development, especially with Beach Street. We have started the project down by our water pollution control plant to raise the road. One of the problems there, and it affects public safety, is um, 
there it, it's a flood zone. Yeah. So we've had the two super storms that came in and you know really demolished that area. Mm -hmm. People reluctant, especially developers, to say, well, hey, I'm going to come there and put that in when and the next storm could be right around the corner. Yeah. So we were able to secure um, uh, funding um, uh, both on the state level through some bonding and also on the local level um, it is from the city of West Haven, some bonding. We okay. started phase one, which is water pollution control, mm -hmm. and that is they're raising the road as we speak, and my understanding is that project started approximately a month ago mm -hmm. and is um, scheduled to um, finish early, that it will definitely be finished before the end of the year because I spoke with the engineer just the other day. So that that's a big deal, along mm -hmm. with we have now secured um, money, um, again, through um, the Bonding Commission through the state of Connecticut to um, complete to phase two and phase three. So that will take the road um, higher and bring it up to the Debonair um, Hotel, where the Debonair Hotel is. Okay. So I do believe that once the developers see that something really is happening to correct um, the flood zone and also the public safety issue down there, I do believe we're gonna have um, a lot of interest. And I very much believe we have the most beautiful beach mm -hmm. <laughs> Connecticut and I would like to showcase it and you know other beach fronts have you know whether it be shops whether it be a conference center a hotel whatever it is we are we are hoping and planning on developing that area um, and we're not going to violate any of the land trust stuff because I know that the, that group worked mm -hmm. very hard in that and people don't realize that's a small part and um, it's not the whole beach or anything like yeah. that we have plenty of room for development uh, and we are going to utilize that and go forward with it um. I mean, other things you got going on there, you got like the Saving Rock Roasting Company kind of leading the way uh, at the Eastern Ramen Bar, Rebar and Pizza. So do you see uh, there room for making that area kind of a hot spot for up and coming restaurants? Um, I would say yes. And I, I love West Haven of the diversity in our restaurants. I think you can get any kind of food you want and it's excellent and the restaurants are all good. I feel very bad for them, the hit that they're taking. This is another one of the COVID things. They're taking a serious hit. So I encourage our residents whenever they can to go out. If you feel uncomfortable going in, you can still do takeout. Mm -hmm. You can buy gift cards, give them to your family and friends. I encourage everyone to support our businesses because I'm concerned that some of them will not be able to sustain this much yeah. longer. Um, and, and that would be difficult because, again, they're, they're all great. They're all good. I We go out a lot, my husband mm -hmm. and I, because it's are grown, so yeah. we go out a lot, especially on the weekends, and we visit many, many, many of the restaurants, and hmm. again, all good, and we're very, very fortunate to have the diversity that we do in food yeah. and, and culture yeah. in West Haven. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think West Haven's uh, restaurant scene has a lot of hidden gems. Um, you know, I live in New Haven, and I still am you know, coming over there sometimes for some of your amazing, like, Middle Eastern and Latino cuisines, mm -hmm. and then down by the water, you have some of the more... Uh, higher end sort of stuff going on with seafood and it's just a, a lot of great stuff going on over there a real uh, variety of choices um, yes. for a smaller city you are listening to the municipal voice on WHH 103.5 FM so in Allentown section of West mm -hmm. Haven uh, UNH has seen a lot of growth over the last decade um, but only recently have some new businesses kind of come in surrounding that. Have you talked with uh, UNH and worked with them on any projects? Is there anything in the pipeline for the area in the future? Well, we did start um, talking to them before COVID, but unfortunately when COVID hit and of course yeah. all of their students had to go home, we haven't done much down there, but we will continue talks because there are some different areas that I think we can partner with and work together. Um, I have met with President Kaplan on several occasions since I've taken mm -hmm. office, but I do believe there's opportunity there, especially with um, the Atwood Parkview. Uh, Capetas has done a major renovation on their mm -hmm. business, and so it really um, is night and day from where it was just a few years back, and I want to continue that growth in Allentown yeah. so that the, the taxpayers there get some tax relief as well, because again, economic development growth is, is the key to, you know, alleviating a lot of these tax increases. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've heard yet, but do you know if the university is going to be in class uh, in this fall, they're going to be in there in person or are they going to be distance learning? Have you? I don't know for sure. Mm -hmm. I know 
looking at all aspects. To my knowledge, they have not made a final decision either way. They're kind of doing like everyone else, um, you know, looking at what's out there, what they can and can't do. And obviously, mm -hmm. it's concerning when we see other states, you know, digressing as opposed to going forward. So yeah. everyone's concerned, and we're concerned about everyone's safety because we don't want anyone to be put in harm's way or, or sick in any way. So um, I'm sure once they reach a final decision, they will let me know. Yeah. Because I imagine that's got to be a concern, especially for that part of town, because like yes. over here in New Haven, downtown, you know, without Yale, there's a lot of restaurants, things that depend on those students every year to kind of keep them going. I imagine that, at least in part, you know, West Haven has some similar issues in the Allentown area. Oh, absolutely. We have restaurants down there that I have to believe are suffering uh, maybe even worse than what we have like in the rest of our city because to your point, they, they do rely on the UNH students and the faculty and all the people that go in and out of there, whether it's yeah. parents coming to get their students, visit their, their, their children, however it is, they stop and eat. And so I do believe that's a, a huge loss of revenue down there that I hope will be corrected in the coming months. Um. Some other economic development you mentioned a little bit before, uh, The Haven, which has been a, a mm -hmm. big project going on for a while there. Uh, for many years, it's been development. Is that still proceeding as, as planned? Um, and is there any future ideas for the area if you don't end up with a boutique mall? Well, it is um, still proceeding. Um, mm -hmm. they have, as I said, they have a trailer down there. They have fenced the property now, which has helped us a lot. Just um, those two things. Reason being because it was a lot of illegal dumping. We even had somebody okay. arrested once. You know, they were dumping tires, all the kind of stuff, you know, that mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be doing. So um, it is it is proceeding. I am still, it, they are still, I'm being told that it's going forward exactly the way that they had originally planned. But if for some reason it didn't, we would uh, readdress the area and uh, obviously we're not going to leave it just vacant like that but right now they are moving forward and as mm -hmm. I said they have, um, the place is secure now they have mm -hmm. a trailer down there they do work down there so we are doing our best to move along with that project. Um, you, you mentioned just now uh, that fencing and help with illegal dumping and stuff and dumping kind of reminds me that uh, West Haven is part of uh, Sustainable Connecticut Sustainable CT, um, which is a big statewide kind of green project. Um, do you have any green projects in the works in West Haven? Um, I I know that we were going to, and again with COVID, people backed off because some, you can't have yeah. whatever. We do. Uh, we did have um, our Sustainable Connecticut part of it. We want to increase mm -hmm. our level, so we are not only on green projects, but we're trying very hard to get interested people, which has been difficult for whatever the reason, mm -hmm. on our energy commission, because we mm -hmm. don't have an active working energy commission. And that's an important part of a sustainable Connecticut. Yeah. So again, hopefully people will be watching the show and send me their resumes, because we do need a, a, a couple more people to, to um, even out the group, if you will, so that we can mm -hmm. have meetings. Again. But I do believe in it. It was very exciting to go to the CCM conference and, mm -hmm. and you know, have that award given to us. It, it's yep. an honor. And I'd like to thank uh, Robin Parsons and the whole group that worked with her to help us through this process. Um, you were mentioning uh, an energy commission. What would an energy commission do? When they, would they kind of look to find efficiencies in, in city buildings or what, what would a commission do? Yes, they would take a look at um, electric bills. They would take a look at the city buildings. We have been very active. We just um, received uh, some solar projects that we're mm -hmm. trying to do solar. And so all of those things, and, and it's hard because again, our personnel, we have a very um, uh, modest group. People don't realize there's not like thousands of people that work um, for the city. And so um, having a volunteer group mm -hmm. that could this research and then I'll bring it to us and say, hey, look, we have this idea or we can do this or what do you think about this would definitely be a help to my administration. Uh, you mentioned some solar projects and, you know, renewables are, are kind of the, the future, it seems like in a lot of places. Um, are those, how are those projects proceeding? Are those on city properties? Are you, were there grants? Or are you working with a company? How, how does that work? Actually, all of what you just said, uh, some are going to be on some of the Board of Ed properties, which mm -hmm. are city properties as well. We've done some grants and we are we are facilitating wherever we can. I know the city council or sitting city council is very, very um, big on um, using solar and it does. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of 
cents. Plus, we uh, not only reap the you know the energy the, the benefits of all of it. Um, however, we also get paid for some of it, so we will yeah. get some revenue out of it. So it, it makes financial mm -hmm. sense as well as environmental sense. Right, both. It, it's Which is a win always always nice. <laughs> yeah, always nice. <laughs> makes it a lot easier to decide. Um, yes, it does. So you seem pretty upbeat. Uh, I think I know the answer to this, but how do you feel about the, the future of West Haven? I feel West Haven has a bright future. We have a very resilient group uh, of Westies. We all stick together, um, you know, and even though uh, West Haven, the way it is, may get a little, <laughs> you know, controversial here and there, but we yeah. all stick together. And I think we have a resilient group. I think we've weathered the worst part of the storm, not wood. Mm -hmm. and you know, all of that because again, COVID did set us back. I know <laughs> COVID did set us back some and I'm not yeah. going to do that. It absolutely did. But that being said, I, I'm hoping that, you know, we continue the progress we've made um, with, with not only the COVID and, and mm -hmm. keeping safe, but with economic development and raising revenue in different ways outside of the box rather than just raising taxes. I guess in one final thing, because you just mentioned COVID again and everything, have there been anything, any stories, not necessarily within City Hall itself, but within West Haven during this whole thing that have given you hope, that have inspired you? Well, I want to say with what's always inspired me, again, are, are the people of West Haven. Mm -hmm. They we have done a lot of outreach that a lot of people don't um, know about to help those who fell on unfortunate times because they mm -hmm. lost jobs. So they didn't have food. It wasn't even, you know, and so um, our public works uh, led by our commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, McCarthy has reached out. They have um, fed people. Um, the council has been, the city council members have been involved in that. Mm -hmm. Regular citizens have been involved in that, have stepped up, have donated. I also am a Rotarian and the Rotary mm -hmm. um, stepped up, did a GoFundMe page, which was okay. matched or the foundation and was able to get the Chrome books and, and laptops for the students that didn't have it. Oh, that's so great. it's not only, but it's education because it's not the same. You want to have every student have a fair chance at education mm -hmm. and a level playing. And for those families that unfortunately could not afford the technology, yeah. it's not fair that they have a packet of papers and someone else had the technology. So we did our best working with uh, Neil Cavaliero, uh, superintendent of schools, to work together and get this done. So again, we had a community that saw that there were problems and reached out. We also were able to house um, some of our homeless um, during the pandemic mm -hmm. at the best and make sure that they had meals. And some of them now have gone out on to secure housing. And I hope that there's okay. some good stories that that even if it's only a few or a small percentage those mm -hmm. are people that unfortunately were you know on the streets and not knowing where their next meal would come from mm -hmm. uh, we partnered um, with churches as well um, mm -hmm. the, uh, the congregational church on the green um, vertical church and many other churches and organizations I know mm -hmm. I'm gonna I, I'm not gonna remember them all but the Elks was involved mm -hmm. we had so many organizations that stepped up in West Haven it was overwhelming yeah. the, the, Wonderful, wonderful, positive support. So that's why I believe we're a community that cares and we're going to continue to go forward. And I do believe there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Well, I certainly hope so for all of us. Well, I'd like to thank our guest, Mayor Rossi, <laughs> for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. This was a great opportunity. And thank you for letting uh, me tell all the good stories in West Haven. Thank you. Thanks to our premier sponsors, Digital Back Office and Palo Alto Networks which you can check out at digitalbackoffice.com and paloaltonetworks.com. Also, thanks to our sponsors, Gateway Community College and Housatonic Community College. Learn more at gatewayct.edu and housatonic.edu. The Invisible Voice is a co-production by CCM and WNHH 103.5 FM. Kevin Maloney is our executive producer. Christopher Gilson is our producer. Harry Draws is on the boards. And I'm Matt Ford, your host. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and give us a like and watch out for our CCM chat series on our YouTube page.